So AOVs, um, kind of fun. I'm just going to, eh, what the heck, I'll leave this on. Um, so basically, so no one's using Redshift, so I'm just going to go over these in Arnold. Um, but basically, it stands for arbitrary output variable, uh, which I'm not going to lie, I realized that this morning when I Googled it on Wikipedia. Um, basically, it's just render layers, effectively. Um, so you can render different things out. So if I go into my render settings, um, there's a little tab in Arnold for AOVs. If you click on that, uh, you can see that there's like a few different options here. If I, um, so in the newer versions of, um, uh, what am I saying? Newer versions of Arnold, so like Arnold 5.1 and on, um, there's apparently some more settings in here for like, it's called optics and it's, it's like a denoiser. They have a lot more built-in denoise stuff. They also have like a tune shader built-in with like automatic outlines. I'm like, well, that sounds great. Shame I don't have that version of Arnold. And neither do lab computers. Um, but anywho, um, so if I just click on built-in down here, this is pretty much going to give me a list of all of the default AOVs that are like built into Maya. Um, so this is a bunch of different stuff. Uh, there is, you know, things for specular, so you can render like just your specular highlights. So I'm just going to grab a few of these and just sort of throw them into my scene. Um, and just to show you guys like kind of an idea of uh, what you can do with AOVs. Um, basically, to get them into my scene, I'm just clicking on them and clicking this little button here. You can also double click it, and that'll uh, get it in as well. Um, we have some like you know different little settings and stuff down here, but I'm not going to worry too much about them right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go into my render view. Huzzah. Uh, and you can see pretty much rendering as it normally is. Um, except now I have the option, if I click on this little drop down here, so Beauty Pass is your final, like, nice looking render. Um, pretty much whatever you've been working with now is probably has been Beauty Passes. Um, if I click on any of these other things, you can see that uh, it shows me some different, basically different image formats that it's also calculating. Um, so in this case, this is my shadow mat. This is basically uh, the shadows for my object, and in this case, they look super, super awkward. Um, this light is a little bluer, which is like why the shadow is kind of orange. Um, but you can use all these different things for rendering. So in this case, um, like specular is literally only rendering the specular highlight. So anything that's not shiny is not shown up in this image. Um, so you can use this a lot for um, different types of stuff. One thing, I actually didn't look for it. Um, Somewhere in here, um, there's an option for ambient occlusion, or I'm lying. Oh, no, sorry, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's basically um, AOVs. They just give you a little bit more, more used in like compositing later. Um, you know, when you might need to act, uh, to modify only your shadow or like only your specular highlights, gives you the ability and control to mask out those certain areas and modify them individually. Um, one thing that is pretty cool is Z-depth, um, which basically measures the distance from the camera. So if I do this, where I have like, you know, this is like a pretty aggressive color difference, um, I'll switch over to my Z-channel and off the top of your head, like it doesn't really look like anything's happening. Um, if I fiddle with the exposure of this, I'll set this to maybe negative 10, oh god, not negative 10,000. Um, but you can see that it's basically just a grayscale of distance from the camera. So in this case, black is like really close to the camera, white is farther away, but you can do this, um, you can use this for stuff like adding blur in post-processing to your stuff. So you don't need to worry about um, rendering in blur into your image and it gives you the ability to change the focal length, uh, again, in post-processing. So you can just worry about getting a nice clean render and then deal with all of the blurring later. A um, little bit safer, a little bit more flexibility to do that. Um, but there's a lot of Really weird, cool stuff you can do with AOVs. Um, but that's basically how you set them up. Um, if you ever actually don't see them in your render view, um, like if for some reason this dropdown is not available, um, you can bring the dropdown back up here. But um, you can also access them if you go to View. And this is in your render view. Um, view, AOVs, and you can see all of your other, any of the AOVs that you've added in here, you can select them there as well. Um, Mostly just wanted to make you guys like aware that they existed. Um, but are there any you know questions about these off the top of your head? All right. Um, I'll probably go over them some more in later weeks, but 
again, I mostly just wanted you guys to be aware they exist today.